the PodCraft Beer Show for Monday, December 14th, 2020. This is episode 22, where we examine two fruited sour ales, an American IPA and a rum barrel aged Imperial Double Porter. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the PieCraft Beer Show for Monday, December 14th, 2020. This is episode 22. This is Tech Guy Steve with today's introduction for the host, Chris and Charlie. The PieCraft Beer Show examines on a weekly basis the best craft beer from Southern California and beyond. And for today's show, all the craft beers are from beyond California, and we are going to be all over the board palette-wise which is perfect for me since I am starting to like a lot more variety. If you've been listening for a while, pretty much came into this as a IPA specific kind of person. And now these uh, fruited sours, the stouts, and this porter that we're going to try today definitely have expanded my palate. We examine, um, like I mentioned, uh, two very different flavored fruited sours, an American IPA, and then end with an imperial double porter aged in rum barrels. If you'd like to subscribe to this show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. Yo, I'm pouring beer. We got tech guy, Steve. Yep. Look at that lovely coming to you from La Mesa here. Today HD. we're uh, so today we're going to focus on uh, a couple of beers that uh, Charlie brought back from his recent trip across the country. Yes, I reached out and touched some breweries this week. So it looks like this uh, this first beer you have, uh, Charlie, <sighs> is a smoothie style sour wow. ale with bananas, blueberries, strawberries, oats, maple, uh, milk, sugar, it brewed and canned by the Vale. It's good. Little BB's breakfast. Little BB's brekkie tasty. Yeah. Got a little brekkie going on. That's sludgy almost. Yeah, so that's a little purple guy. So how was that how was that trip? So um so we're we're drinking the veil here. Yeah. Uh why don't you tell us about uh about that drop in? Uh the veil I wasn't uh I I wasn't as pleased with them as I have been in the past. I mean they, they make some great beers. Um so I grabbed pretty much everything they had. Uh at least two four packs from each of their selection and uh tried to buy their stouts but they made that extremely difficult because um i had no wi-fi in in their little sitting area so i didn't didn't buy any stouts because you couldn't buy the stouts at the table where you buy all the rest of the beer you had to order them online and then walk up there and get it which i didn't understand at all which is silliness but i'm sure they have the rules and regulations they have to go by so I just tasted it, and then I figured out it wasn't as what I thought it was going to be. Anyway, so I'm kind of happy it. that I didn't purchase any of that. But uh, yeah, they uh, they have some fruities, they have some uh, IPAs, and they have some pretty good stouts, you know. But that's a unique beer right there. It's a smoothie style. The uh, it's like a breakfast uh, with the maple syrup in there. Mm-hmm. I can definitely the, taste that right when you for right sure. when you right when you taste it. Got something at the end that. <sighs> It's tasty. I like it. It's a fruity dude, but it's it's good. I'd drink it. I'd take a little brekkie. Mm-mm. I don't know how I feel about maple syrup in beers. Well, if they're in your stout, you're not complaining. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I, just the amount, you know, may, may be a little too sweet. Hey, stock market's closing. <laughs> What are you doing there? You you got something running? No, I uh, no. That's a, that's a different podcast. <laughs> so the uh, yeah, you definitely taste the, taste the fruit with like some some maple syrup right over the top of it there. I think the blueberries come through really. Oh, it's super fruity. I don't know that I really taste it's a that. reddish like uh, I don't know what color you want to go with that. Like a reddish, plummy looking color almost. Mild plummy, but super fruity, super tasty. Uh, what was the uh, what's the ABV on that? It's like, I mean, gosh, the writing here again is five like and a half percent. So, so a little, uh, 
Yeah. A sour IPA, yeah, coming in uh, 5.5%. Smoothie style ale brewed with uh, milk, sugar, oats, maple syrup, strawberry, banana, and blueberry puree. Milk, sugar, and maple syrup. Mm -hmm. So you're going double sugary on that. Mm. Yeah, that that maple syrup certainly is. uh, That that comes through the... Through the what? uh, That that comes through the strongest uh, for me, for sure. I like it. I'll drink some more of it. We've got other flavors for this of this later. So when we get into the future with some of these other um, Veil beers that they have that I brought out, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to get into the, some of the different ones. But uh, yeah, I've got a couple of big coolers full of beer and uh, a couple of small coolers full of crowlers. And uh, there's a couple places I hit that I didn't expect to, like uh, we're going to do a beer from uh, Triple Car- uh, Triple Crossing today that I was super impressed with. So, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, you ready to hit number two here? So that was that was a little Breckies, yeah. So it definitely got the I think the blueberry and the maple syrup was uh, was the majority of what came through. Um, Sweeter than I expected. Certainly a little sweeter. I think that's that that maple syrup, maybe a little bit of there. Uh, yeah, it certainly comes in like a like a color between a strawberry and a blueberry, I'd say. And where are they located again? In Richmond, Virginia. So that's where you flew into then, uh, Richmond? Or? Yeah, I took the red eye to Richmond, Virginia, and uh, went from there. Uh, I think I shot up to Aslan. Uh, no, sorry, I shot up to uh, Red Dragon. Oh, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind with how many Let's, places I went to. Where was, oh, what's Red, Ra- Red, Red, Red Dragon? Red Dragon. Red Dragon is uh, a brewery in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. And I didn't hit all the ones I wanted to, only because I, I kind of felt like I was um, I was getting real tired, too, driving around. It's a lot of miles. So, anyways, and I borrowed my brother's car. But uh, I think I loaded it down with about 500 pounds of beer. And then uh, we hightailed it out here to California. But I uh, went to Red Dragon, and then I uh, – there was a lot of traffic up north. So I decided to get an earlier start the next day. And then I went up to Aslan, shot up from Aslan over the bridge to uh, Maryland to RAR, which is in Cambridge, Maryland. Then over to um, Burley Oak, which is in Berlin, Maryland. It's about an hour away from uh, RAR. Speaking of Burley Oak here, uh, that's that's actually what you snapped yeah, there, there most the, recently. Yeah, that's recent one. That right cranberry here. plum cobbler dream. Smells like a sour. So another sour, another... Uh, Cheers. Uh, sour ale conditioned on uh, cranberry plum, cinnamon, uh, vanilla, and brown sugar. Was that the sell the Bitcoin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bitcoin going right out the door. <laughs> this comes through a nice... Cranberry. See, that's a little more Ooh, my style. Yeah, yeah, I like this one. Better. I like this that one cinnamon better. and that brown sugar. I think the mixture there um, tastes like a apple. Well, it, apple pie. Mm-hmm. Cobbler. Is it a uh, apple plum cobbler. cobbler? Okay, plum cobbler. That's Stay a phenomenal away from apples beer. When you're using plums, <laughs> that's a really good beer. Mm-hmm. That cinnamon and brown sugar play really, really well together. But yeah, no, that definitely tastes it's much like lighter. Let, much uh, like a piece of pie. Not as heavy as the other the other beer from uh, Vale. It's uh, it's, it's almost it's not see through, but it's clearer. It smells fantastic. So the the um, how was how was Burley Oak? Burley Oak was neat. Um, unfortunately, I was I was I was running late, so I just ran in there. Bought a bunch of beer, grabbed some, you know, swag, and then headed out. And they were all nice. It's a neat looking place. I'd really, I mean, once they reopened to the point where, you know, you can go in there and do what you want to do, basically, uh, I'd like to go back there and visit. I mean, it's a really neat place, though. And um, from there, I headed down to, I was going to go to Benchtop in Norfolk, but I went all the way across. Cost 14 bucks. To ride that tunnel and bridge from Maryland to Norfolk, I didn't realize that. Mm. But I mean, I paid it. Did you, did you just pay it in beers? You were yeah, like, "Hey, I, I got an IPA man. and a." Uh, that would have been nice. Tart Gosh. sour ale, it yeah. appears. And, oh, you got Burley Oak? Cool, <laughs> you know that sort of thing. But no, that uh, fourteen bucks, and uh, didn't go to Benchtop, but my nephew uh, Tyler 
nephew-in-law, uh, he he said, hey, can you meet me for dinner at bench t- or at uh, Triple Crossing? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. You know, I was already so tired. And I got there, and he was there, you know, master extraordinaire sitting there waiting for me, you know. And he's all, what do you want to drink? And I'm like, I'm starving, man. I need something to eat. So they had great pizza and uh you know their uh, their beers were delicious. So we had a uh, what did I get? The first one I got was something. I think I got a, a pilsner or a lager or something. It was great. But then the next beer we're gonna do is what I thought was even better. So I drank that and uh, I bought a whole bunch of those and then brought them home with me. So that was that. That was the last brewery I went to. Uh, I love this there. disclaimer on the the, the can. Due to the use of natural fruit, this beer must be kept cold. Yeah, because it'll blow up. <laughs> Otherwise, so, you end up with a fruit bomb, a, a floating fruit bomb well, flying, cru- cruising across the country. Here's the deal. We we drove home with all this in the back of the car, you know, and the, uh, the only ones I had in the cooler were the crawlers. So the rest of them were just sitting in the back. But everywhere we were, we didn't get in to anywhere where it was above 65 degrees. So we're driving through these, you know, I checked the weather overnight. Flagstaff, last place we are in, it was like 20 degrees overnight. I'm like, perfect, you know, leave it in there. It's going to be colder and it'll be in a cooler probably. So that was super amazing. But, uh, yeah, I was only concerned about the crawlers because I know if those things change temperature, it's all over. But and those are big bombs. I mean, that's a cleanup time. That's a lot of fruit beer you were cruising across the country. A lot of, you know, just shrapnel everywhere. Yeah, well, that is going to be interesting because, um, <laughs> you know, I'll give some to you guys, but uh, I'm going to have to get them out and, and see which how many I have of each type, you know, because there's like probably six or seven different types of uh, of those crawlers, different flavors. And uh, the only one I tried was a chocolate and fruit one i can't remember what it was berries and stuff and it's good but it's really chocolatey more than i expected so yeah if you're a chocolate lover that is your beer give it to your old sweet tooth yeah somebody who <laughs> likes chocolate would dig that i mean i thought it was good but it wasn't something that i would have chosen had i tasted it before i would have said eh, i will save that for somebody who likes chocolate but i figure i could find one or two of those people you know in between now and Christmas or New Year's, so Steve, you're a chocolate lover. Yeah. How about your wife? Yeah, maybe. What about she yours? really liked the fruit sours that we've okay had so well, far. We'll figure that out. We'll get, the, the we'll ans- get it worked out. The, the ones from the answer were everybody loved that. That's what I'm talking about, though. Those are all from uh-huh. those two. Cool- those two coolers are all full of crawlers from the answer. Wow. So we're gonna sort through them before you're let out of here. <laughs> and you're 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 uh, sworn to secrecy <laughs> where you got them. <laughs> that uh um yeah, those answer crawlers are something else. Um, man, do you guys have any good beers this week, Steve? Well, I, I I've been enjoying you guys' present from last week, which is twenty four beers for Advent season. So twenty four beers. That is a some pretty good beers pretty too. amazing beer day. So. Yeah, uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to pick the best one, but I did have that that um, BNC Fog from um, Humble Sea. It's a double, yeah, double IPA. Very that good. was today. That was yeah, a couple of days ago. I think. Oh, okay. I don't know what. But it's really hard to say which one of the ones in that. Were yeah, you've been you've been posting those uh, as you check them in. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, there's definitely been uh, some some decent uh, decent cans. Well, let's there. put it this way: I didn't give you a bad beer, Steve. So far, that is true. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Paps to be really. Uh, no, you're not going to find one of those in there. That won't even be a surprise on <laughs> that one. How about you? What'd you have? I drank a lot of beer. Uh, you know, I drank beer at uh, the Vale. I drank beer at uh, the Answer. I drank beer at uh, had the Answer Stout. I got, actually grabbed a couple of cans of that. Uh, super tasty. Um, you'd like it because it has cinnamon in it, and. I'm not the biggest fan of cinnamon, but they did a pretty decent job. And actually, when it warmed up, it was a lot better than it was when it was cold. So it's a plus. But uh, um, drank a couple of Aslan, drank a couple of uh, at least one of Triple Crossing. And um, I had uh, I had an Aslan Hell's Lager tonight. So before you guys got here, pre-gaming. Pretty decent? Uh, 
nice and light. Excellent. Yeah. Very crispy and excellent, man. It was, I mean, some of these guys are doing amazing things with other types of beers, but they could make a heck of a lager and a heck of a Pilsner too. So that's always a plus for me, you know, if I can jump in on that. Uh, Somebody, uh, somebody told me that uh, Bernie Beard won a, uh, an award for, Uh, for Banksy. There you go. ESB. So the um, right, that's ESB, right? Yep. Yeah, for their ESB. Sweet. They're uh, congratulations. At the U.S. Uh, Open Beer Championships. It's a dang good beer, man. That's a, no, just yeah, a it's dang good beer. Yeah, phenomenal beer, phenomenal beer. So congratulations. If you're to doing those an ESB gents. and it's anything close to Banksy, it's fantastic. Yeah, you're doing something all right. Yeah, that's good. That's some good beers. But uh, there's plenty of them. You can see them just sitting up there on the counter. They're just waiting to be shelved in the coolers. I mean, it's so cold out, so. We can go without uh, refrigeration here, almost up underneath the the roof here. But uh, yeah, I was I was tasting all kinds of beers. I did taste the beer in. Uh, gosh, I can't even mention the name of the place we were at because it wasn't very good. Um, my brother and I stopped in there, and we were not only disappointed in the food but the beer too. So my brother wrote it. A review on Yelp. I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> he, you know, he said the, something like the pizza was hot and the uh, beer was wet. <laughs> and he got a response from the owner. <laughs> and I said, I am not talking to this guy. So that's all you. But uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was a road trip, you know. Long hours in the car, you know. Only stop to go to the bathroom and fill up gas and stuff like that. Unless you find a place to drink beer and then you kind of mosey in there for a couple hours but we made it out here pretty pretty quickly there you but, go uh, with a little bit of uh vehicle problems transmission problems so yeah we're rectifying that problem as we speak so anyways but uh yeah good cobbler i'm a fan no that's phenomenal yeah that's it's early oak man they do a lot of these fruited j- uh, their dream dream, the dream with a j yeah. so j-r-e-a-m dream yeah the uh um I, I had a couple of beers this week i think the uh I had a, um man i think the best beer i had i had this triple ipa from harlan that was a uh it was a collab with moxa mm-hmm. uh, i was uh, it was called fan of a fan super smooth usually you know i i think i find with like uh triple ipas i have a tough time drinking a 16 ounce can of a triple ipa a 10 percent ipa like i'd rather have you know uh six we well, know that but we know you're working out it <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was a phenomenal beer. It was super, super smooth. It was pillowy soft. It was just, uh, it was phenomenal. It was a hazy, uh, hazy triple IPA. It what was, was it great. called again? Friend of a friend? A fan of a fan. Fan of a fan. Yeah. I like it. And I was a fan Yeah, big of fan. that fan of a fan. Well, there's um, there's something to be said about a triple IPA that drinks real smooth. It's called Danger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, yeah, a 10 percenter, I suppose, right oh, around there. Oh, goodness. Wow. That is large. What else we got uh, there? What else you got shaking? I got one more beer for you in my uh, in my grab bag here. It's this one is from Triple Crossing, and it is an IPA, seven percent alcohol. It's called Falcon Smash, and my nephew told me that this is a beer that built Triple Crossing. So, cheers, boys! If you didn't hear that, cheers. Cheers. This is this is this is good stuff. I actually tasted this one already, so I know. And I think uh, Chris got a little snippet of it. I did get a little a uh, little taster the other day, but it uh, it says it's their flagship IPA. Yeah, uh, dank hop character from dry hop of the Falconer's Flight, proprietary blending rotation hop varietals. So I had a I had a half pour of this, so I got a, like like uh, five ounces or eight ounces of whatever it was. And I was like, holy crap, this is good beer, man. This is really good. So I was super impressed. So I bought I bought a case and brought it home. It's a really that good smelling smells beer. Really good. Yeah, it does, not it? Is. Like I said, it's one of my favorites right now. So you won't be seeing this thing laying around in the backyard other than empty cans of it and me sprawled somewhere. But uh, yeah, big fan of this. I'm going to go back to this place because it is a super neat Super, it's like super they're, bre- they're building a new brewery as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> it's it's going to be like right on the water somewhere. So that's going to be fun. But just this place was huge. I mean, it had more outdoor seating than I'd seen in a long time. And everybody was outside, obviously. 
but uh, super neat, um, well set up place, very friendly. The the waitresses and uh, beer tenders and stuff were super nice. It was it was a real nice nice experience because I've been on the road all day getting beer, and this is the last place I stopped. And you know, it was just great food, great beer. I was really really pleasantly surprised uh, by going to Triple Crossing and uh, drinking that. How you like that, Steve? I would really like the can. Yeah. Just Can's looking cool. at the can, it's cool. It's got a big um, falcon. It's all in fire. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. took a picture with it in the background of the fire. So oh, yeah. Because we're out on Charlie's porch. The um, Gosh, that's just super drinkable. Like, yeah, it's just it's a hazy IPA, crushable. just fruity, like, What's the ABV on hops. that? Seven? Seven. Seven percent. Gotta yeah, that's a super too. drinkable, uh, super drinkable beer. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's something that I was pleasantly surprised to run into you know seeing this was not a place i had planned on going i planned on going to benchtop which is a great brewery but i was running late and so i just met uh him there my nephew there and uh we hung out had some pizza drank you know like two half pours and we're out of there you know that sort of thing after i purchased a bunch of beer i bought everything that i thought I think I bought everything, a little bit of everything they had, but I bought a case of this uh, this particular beer. But just, yeah, I wanted really to taste good. everything. And we had a Dunkel, a Dunkel over there, which was pretty doggone good too. So, or he had a Dunkel. I can't remember what I had first. Maybe I went for a sour or something. Can't remember it, but it was all good. It was all good. So, cheers, boys. Yeah, no, that's a really good IPA. Like that's a, really a go-to-er. Yeah, that's uh, I could definitely drink that again. Well, that's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> I'm gonna drink all these. Dang it! Ooh. and that's in Northwick, Norfolk, or just that is in Richmond. Also. Richmond, no. okay. Richmond so all the breweries, in- uh, actually, yeah, Burley Oak was in Maine or Maryland, right? Yeah, Burley and Ra are in both in Maryland. Okay, and then Aslan is in uh, Herndon. Uh, Virginia, which is way up by uh, D.C. And then um, I wanted to go to two other breweries, but I just didn't have the time. I mean, one of them was a little further out, and that is Android Theory. And they make some really good stouts and some really good uh, IPAs and stuff. So I wanted to run in there, and it was just too far out. I probably wouldn't have been able to make it there and then get back in time to even spend any time with anybody else. So I... I cut it off this time. I'll make it a trip on another time just and go specifically to Aslan and Android Theory and get beers there. But we'll see. I mean, it's, it's, um, you're limited, you know, because I'm driving, I was driving my brother's car and I felt bad that, you know, he's not able to go around and do his regular, you know, stuff. So. Right. And he, well, and he couldn't even bring clothes on this trip with him because you had so much beer in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he did bring a bag. But he, he went from two bags down to one, he said. I'm like, oh, thanks. We got more room for beer then. I think I'll stop and get another case or two. But uh, we're, we, had a, we had a good time drinking beer, so that's for sure. Anywho, but uh, yeah, Triple Crossing, big fan. Yeah, that's a really, really tasty beer. Did you I, see uh, the Stone Brewery there? In Richmond, Did you drive by, or just is it anywhere? No, I didn't even it? know. Yeah. I didn't really even know that it exists. To be honest with you, nobody goes there. I don't think. I mean, very is few it, people. From what I gather from the beer drinking community there, so hmm. Hmm. I was talking to. I mean, they may. I don't know. I I was talking to some people, you know, and they were like, "Nah, eh, you know, we're going to drink Richmond beer. We're not going to drink, you know, California beer." So. Richmond beer is good. There's there's many, 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 many good breweries down, you know, where the Vale is, there's like three or four within a block, you know, so or a couple of blocks. And I I've been to a couple of them, but I was impressed with the Vale the first time I went there. And the second time I went there I was really impressed. And then this past time I wasn't so impressed because it's it's COVID. You know, you don't have the same experience. So unfortunately, I mean, I'm sure they're just they're making, you know, light style beer still, but you know. That stone brewing down there is phenomenal. I mean, that's just, they have the coolest breweries. Like, you know, that the original stone up in Escondido. Yeah, is, the way they look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like stone. walking through well, the there, one the, one at, the one down in Liberty, Liberty Station, Station is super little, cool. Yeah, that's hip. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they opened that for distribution, right? It was 
I mean, it is a place where they can distribute from yeah. the East Coast without having to drive all the Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, that, you know, but I don't think it's as popular because there are many, mm-hmm. many high-quality breweries right. in that area. It'd be I like mean, one of those companies, one of them coming here and trying to open yeah. up a brewery. Yeah, you know, but but there is just, fan, like, you know, I have a, I have a, a good friend of mine who's a um, super big fan of, of Sierra Nevada, but lives on the East Coast. So mm-hmm. it's like the Sierra Nevada in North Carolina. I think there's a Sierra Nevada in North Carolina. Okay. Um, which is like his go-to spot mm-hmm. out there. Um, because he's a Sierra Nevada fan. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, he just loves the quality of it. They uh, they make good beer. They do. He actually went to, a uh, pretty cool story. A couple of years ago, they they did this. Um, and this is a unique individual. Um, but but they, uh, Sierra Nevada did this thing for this beer this camp. Um, I don't think you've met him. But good. the... Um, but they, <laughs> no, they did this thing for, uh, for this beer camp where they were going to take five people. Uh, there was five different ways to get in. One of them was like a, like an entry at all of these different, uh, stadiums around the U S like people could just, you know, put your name in to go to this beer camp. And another one of them was like, you had to have the most amount of likes on a Sierra Nevada post on social media. And that person would get in. And there was three other things that were kind of like artsy, you know, kind of, you had to, you had to actually work to get in outside of just winning one at the, uh, um, but my buddy posted this picture for Sierra Nevada on his Instagram on his, I think it's, I think him and his wife had a business account or something. They posted it on that and they were like, Hey, they, they threw in some prize pack for whoever got the most likes or, or something for sharing it. And, <laughs> and this picture kind of blew up and he won his way into, uh, cool. uh, beer camp. So he, it was like an all week long hangout at Sierra Nevada. Right. Like you're working there. Mm-hmm. They put together this beer. He said that everybody was like super into beer, except for the guy that won it. Like the, you know, it was just some like random. Yeah. Just some guy that some random guy that was like, no, I only like loggers, you know, or <laughs> it's like, do you guys have any Coors Light around oh here? Oh my but, gosh. But they, uh, they had a good time. They got to make a beer. He said it was a phenomenal. They made like some, I don't know if it was like a chili pepper lager or something. He was like, it was a super good. It was like a hoppy chili pepper lager, which just sounds ridiculous mm-hmm. or something like that. He's like, it was amazing. He's like, but. It's really weird. He's like, you drink, you just drink a little bit and everybody would get gas. He's like, I don't know what the combination <laughs> was, but they, like, everybody's getting sick. That was actually Pavel that, uh, oh, okay. That that. So I think I'd, I'd talked about him once before. Um, he's, uh, but yeah, no, it's a super cool experience. But he's a big, you know, so that speaks to you, like, you know, like it being a, a, a West Coast brewery on the East Coast. And, and that's kind of like his end, you know, I mean, he's well, a big beer fan and loves their quality. Stone has done so much for the, craft beer community i mean you you cannot deny what they've done for the craft beer community so but you know is that my go-to is that something i would drive you know to go get i was just wondering if you drove by the freeway and you saw it out i don't even know where it is i really don't i didn't ask i don't know either i had my had my route planned and i i stuck to it you know because if i if i you know changed it at all dang especially going through like Washington D.C. area, you know how that is. Yeah, That's a nightmare driving mass, experience. Huh? And I heard uh, I won't even get into that story. I mean, there's there's some places to drink in in uh, Arlington, like Church Key. Yeah, and what's the other one? The Sovereign, I think it's called. Oh gosh, if you're in there that area, those are the two places to drink beer. That Church Key is the spot to go, huh? No, nah, Sovereign is is pretty legit too. It's a little. Uh, let me think how I want to say this word. Um, a little sketchier, but yep. good. I mean, they yep. got. I mean, that's the only place I know where you can go and get KC beer out of the bottle, right mm. there. So mm. check it out. It's down a dark alley. What do we got for uh, for an after potty there? You brought it. You know, I what did. I there. did. Can I have the opener? Stephen mentioned the other day. Uh, um, he, he had brought up some some stouts. Or excuse me. Uh, porters. Yeah, porters. He asked about porters. Hey, porter. Hey, so porter. I had, uh, I'd had this little porter sitting around. This little, uh, it's no rules is the, uh, um, is the name of it. Uh, no rules Vietnamese. Uh, um, this is 2018. No rules Vietnamese porter rum barrel aged. Everybody knows the rules. One drink. <laughs> so the uh, it's made by Perrin Brewing in uh, in Michigan. Um, and they, they do a bunch of different variants of this beer. This beer actually just won a, uh, um, a bronze medal at the GABF, uh, the, the base stout for this, uh, this beer did. So the, you know, I, I did a little bit of research, Steve, just questioning, you know, we, we kind of talked about, uh, 
we talked about porters and we talked about uh you know kind of stouts right charlie charlie right. had said uh he's like ah just lay off the lay off the porter you're like go with the stout right so i you know i was like kind of where did that come from right because they're super close to the you know kind of the same type of beer goes back like know. 300 years porters porters are different than a stout to, well, today they're right today, but they, they they both generated out of the same type of beer like 300 years ago. They hey, said there was doggone it, that's good. That's pretty all right. <laughs> Shockingly good. <laughs> that is that's that's right. That's on the verge of stoutness too. That's a pretty good, pretty all right beer. Nice and smooth. Much smoother really and good. sweeter than I thought. I think a barrel character. Yeah, I there smell too. a ton of barrel there. But it's smell thinner. It's, you know, it's thinner than like the stouts we've been drinking, which are. are you know, usually on the on the thicker end, yeah, like this, uh, you got lacing, pastry. but no viscosity here. Yeah, so they were, you know, they kind of talked about it just being like, a, um, you know, originally if if you went into a place, um, you know, back in the day, and there's been a lot of a lot of variation to, you know, kind of what's what's went on with ba- you know, Baltic porters, Vietnamese porters, milk, you know, like uh, pastry porters, like a milk, uh, like a milk porter. You know, they talked about smoke um, porters. Yeah, they you know they talked about all these different kind of kind of changes, but originally going back three hundred years, it was essentially the same. The um, a a porter uh, or a stout was actually called a porter stout, right? Yeah. And then they so it was just like a higher gravity uh, porter. So it was just on the higher the higher range. So like over the course of time, it just split from porter being like a, a lighter, um, but both of them using the same. Uh, the the same ingredients kind of. You're right there, Steve. Look at him; he's just gunning that down, man. He's not holding back today. That's really good. Yeah, That's all right, good. huh? Yeah, yeah I, I I think it's, I it smells uh, really boozy. When yeah, you smell yeah. It. It does. And I was worried about What's that. What's the alcohol on that? Does not taste. Is that, that eight? Though. That's only fifteen percent. Is that it? That's only. Yeah, it's fifteen percent. It is fifteen percent. Holy crap! Yeah, it certainly man. doesn't taste a a a fifteen percent. Or it smells fifteen percent, but it doesn't taste fifteen percent. Yeah, no, it um. <clears throat> It's uh, there's really no heat. It smells really boozy. Yeah. Uh, but but on the taste, there's there's really boozy no heat and on there. Barely. Uh, so they talk about this. The the no rules uh, were followed with the creation of this this product. This uh, gigantic fifteen percent imperial porter was deceptively smooth and subtly sweeter with layers of flavors that uh, never seemed to end. Uh, some say it tastes like a mound candy bar that's been dipped over and over in this rich chocolate soaked bourbon. A little bit. Other people find uh, flavors of coconut, cinnamon, toffee, vanilla, coffee. Uh, they would also be correct. It's been aged I'm just rumbles. trying to figure out what's what's drawing me to it the most is is it the uh, is that that uh, coconut? The smell I smell cinnamon. I smell cinnamon on the on the nose, but uh, it's a good looking bottle too. A little red wax. Yeah. No, that's good. I uh, I'm excited. Do have a uh... Vietnamese Portis. Yeah, that's, that's certainly porter. not a bottle that you could drink on your own, like that. Uh, oh no, bomber of that. Is this? Is that? Uh, um, John Goodman. John from Goodman. The big from Lebowski. The Big Lebowski, right? Holy crap, right on the front. Man. How did they, I uh, pull that out of a hat? Yeah, the uh, um, the the bunch of their their ads are showing like the you know like the bowling ball kind of kind of spinning yeah. around, but no rules, no rules, dude. So this is a local beer for uh, so this is from Michigan, but but more of a regional beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a pretty decent size. It appears to be a pretty decent sized beer for that that area or, or brewery for that area. And who is it again? Uh Par- Perrin is it Perrin. Perrin. Perrin Brewing. Yep, Perrin Brewing in uh Comstock Park, Michigan. Hey Perrin did a great job. Tasty. No, Order. that's a go-to. Yeah, they've they've made it for a few years, and it just won a uh, you know Great American Beer Festival. What? Uh, just won that uh, that bronze medal. I'm even more so. impressed now. Yeah, no. So, uh, Good so there's a porter for you. I'll Maybe drink it. More where that came from. I'll drink it all day long. Fifteen percent though. Good night. Yeah. Well, oh, it's about goodness. to be good night. Yeah, I'm gonna take a nap after this, and then have dinner. Gosh. Very well. Fifteen percent. Well, until next week, huh, guys? Are we? Are we done? We out? I think that's it. Cheers, we, uh, we'll, we'll continue uh, chatting about your uh, your journey. Ooh, gosh. Next I got more week. stories. I know that. All right, then. Cheers, guys. Cheers. So to summarize today's show, we had Little BB's Brecky Tasty, a fruited sour with milk, sugar, oats, maple syrup, strawberries, and banana from the Vale Brewing Company in Richmond, Virginia. The second beer was Cranberry Plum Cobbler 
J-R-E-A-M. Another fruited sour ale with cranberry, plum, cinnamon, vanilla, and brown sugar from Burley Oak Brewing Company in Berlin, Maryland. The American IPA was Falcon Smash from Triple Crossing from Richmond, Virginia. And the last beer was No Rules Vietnamese Porter, an imperial double porter aged in rum barrels and released in 2018 from Perrin Brewing Company in Comstock Park, Michigan. Subscribe to the podcast show, get links to all the beers and breweries mentioned, see pictures of the beers we examined today and to connect with the podcast via email or social media, then head over to thepodcraft.com for all that info. As we close out today's show, we do have three requests for listeners. First, please also consider recommending the show to craft beer friends and family members in your life. Word of mouth is the best way to increase listeners. And second, please consider rating the podcast on the platform you're listening to it on. This helps others find the podcast via searching and discovery on the many podcast platforms. And third, if you have constructive criticisms on how we can improve, then please send us an email via the links on the website. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for the PodCraft Beer Show. Have a great day. The PodCraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go!